right, you're watching In the Market here on AM Live. It is Thursday, and every Thursday we see what is happening in the market. And today we want to turn our focus on what is happening with the ease of doing business. Kenya has moved up to 19 places in the World Bank Ease of Doing Business Index to position 61 globally from position 80 last year. Thanks to efforts by the government to strengthen access to credit, make property registration easier, among other things. And I want to also show you what is on the front page of the New Times as well in regard to this. Is also Rwanda still beating Kenya as far as the ease of doing business is concerned? Uh, because this is what Rwanda is headlining this morning, according to the New Times. Let me just try and uh, lift that quickly for you. Rwanda improves 11 places in doing business, it says. And uh, Rwanda has improved 11 places in the annual series of World Bank's Doing Business Report, ranking 29th globally. From the 41st the previous year, the country retained its second position in Africa. We have a story here by Victor Kiprop, just to put into perspective what we're talking about today. Then we also continue with our panel discussion with our panelists here. According to the Global Doing Business Report released today, the huge improvement is attributable to continued efforts by the government to remove bottlenecks to doing business in the country, largely through the use of technology. It now takes just 49 days for a business to register a property transfer, down from 61 days before the government introduced an online system to pay fees and obtain digital certificates. Meanwhile, access to credit has also been strengthened by a new law on secure transactions that created a unified secure transactions legal framework. Paying taxes has also been made easier by merging all permits into a single unified business permit and simplifying the value-added tax VAT schedule on the iTax platform, thus reducing the time it takes to file for a VAT. Kenya's other strengths as reviewed by the World Bank include strengthening requirements, regulations for minority investors, increasing shareholder rights and calls for greater corporate transparency. However, starting a business remains cumbersome, costing entrepreneurs 25% of their income per capita, nearly 10 times more the expensive than in Cote d'Ivoire, in a process that takes 23 days compared to just 4 days in Rwanda. Rwanda remains the best destination to do business in East Africa, having improved to position 29 from 41 last year, even as Uganda and Tanzania sank to positions 127 and 144 respectively from 122 and 137 last year. Victor Kiprop, NTV Business. All right, so learning lessons there from Rwanda. What are they doing that we're not doing? Uh, let's hear from our panelists. Uh, Patrick Bath. Uh, I think within East Africa, Kenya is the only country that has a robust economy uh, since 2015, isn't it? And I know also uh, Zambia is also gagging for uh, rebasing the economy as well. But why is Rwanda always rising, you know, uh, to be the top of the cream? I think for me, Rwanda is simple implementation, that's all. Right? Um, we've got all the regulations, we've got everything else. We're doing quite well in terms of paperwork. And frameworks. I mean, and that was what has brought Kenya to where we are now, right? But Rwanda did that and then implemented ruthlessly. And that's why Rwanda is where it is. And in Kenya, if, all we, if we can ride on the back of that improvement in the framework and, and, and processes and implement ruthlessly, then we shall be there. Mm -hmm. If you look at the details in the, in the do, ease of doing business, some areas have actually dropped back, yeah? um, whereas they had actually improved quite a lot before. And that just shows really wh why Kenya cannot get to where Rwanda is. Mm -hmm. And I think Rwanda for me is just that simple. Ruthless implementation. Right. But many people also have been complaining that we cannot get a comparison between maybe uh, some of East African countries with Rwanda uh, comparing their kapa, ka, kapa, 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 uh, <laughs> Right. I can't get it today. That one. <laughs> that one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'll get it. Uh, but the let's size, just see. The size uh, of the economy. <laughs> <laughs> per capita, yes. Per capita, per capita, yeah. Yes, it's not rolling off my tongue this morning. Yeah, yeah we cannot, as uh, uh, that is concerned. Uh, we were actually discussing with uh, my colleagues before break, and are saying that actually for me, first, I think that it is not impossible to overtake Rwanda. The second is I think it is not true that Rwanda is the only one that's always rising. If you look at uh, the results, <laughs> Kenya has been improving over the last four years on the ease of doing <coughs> business. If that is not called rising, I don't know what rising is. The second, Rwanda started much earlier in terms of the reforms for them to be able to achieve. If you look at the report 
four years ago, mm -hmm. uh, the basic things Kenya wasn't doing to enable us to move up the line. I think what mm -hmm. the government consistently did, and thanks to the initiative also of people like KEPSA, they consistently said, look, what are the indicators for the ease of doing business? Why are we perennially down? And they focused consistently on ensuring that we do the things that are required for us to have a good business climate. And I think for me, this is the one place that Kenya has consistently moved. And what we need to do is just two things. Number one is to, con uh, to continue on the reform trajectory. Mm -hmm. But number two is to ensure that it's not just about ticking the boxes. That we then now ensure that those reforms deliver the results that are required. And when we get into the deals, you realize one thing to have the technology innovations that is the ease of doing business measures is one thing to have the legal framework for the ease of doing business measures. You must then ensure that those things translate into tangible and accurate benefits. But I think we're on the right track. You're on the right track. Uh, Dr. Gituro, you agree? Are we on the right track? <coughs> uh, I think first is to appreciate we move from 120 to 61. Mm -hmm. I think the the focus is by 2020 will be below 50. I think that's possible. But, but I think we need to, if you look at the countries which are number one up to five, you're talking on New Zealand, you're talking Singapore, Hong Kong, Denmark. Mm -hmm. There's an element those countries have embraced, and I think my two colleagues are shy. They have zero tolerance in terms of issues of corruption. Mm -hmm. If you go to New Zealand, Norway, they're very clear. And, and I think it's important I, I don't know, and, and I know there is a work behind it, uh, the, the, the people in the World Bank who are given the responsibility to develop this. But let me tell you, if you actually, we step out the street here today <coughs> and ask an importer who is using the Bakasi internal uh, depot, they have stories to tell you. They are very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So I really don't see the reality here that the ease of business has improved Mm -hmm. But when you read it on the ground talking, the people who are doing it, they tell you a different but, but a story. Mm -hmm. But I think something, I think we must commit, the Kenya has moved on. I think Mauritius, Mauritius reads in Africa. And you look in the story of Mauritius in terms of business, there are very clear things they have adopted. Mm -hmm. And Gabriel takes all this region, perhaps he has a better perspective, mm -hmm. what Mauritius is doing vis-a-vis -vis us. And I agree with about that Rwanda has adopted what you call Nantes approach to it. We need to. No nonsense approach. We need a, and I've said this before, we need a very positive dictator. Positive dictator. Okay. Positive, positive di plus di dictator. <laughs> I, 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 I nominate, I nominate him. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's hear uh, from Gabriel. No, I, I, I think we, we need to commend Kenya uh, making uh, uh, respectable progress in the... In, in, in the, in, in the uh, not only the doing ease of doing business, but if you look at the theme mm -hmm. of this year's thing, it's called it says reform to create jobs, mm -hmm. and I think Kenya is very much on track to do that with the, with the kind of reforms. But the a, a, a different angle you need to look at when you look at this thing annually is is to 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 get your your listeners to understand that this reform for doing business is not an end in itself. Yes. You know, uh, so, so what? Okay, mm -hmm. one is number eight, one is number 25. What does that mean? The way you measure the success of this effort is by the investment, the, by the foreign direct investment, by the new businesses coming into the respective countries. Now, if you look at these two countries, or we really don't even need to compare. You know, you can start comparing ranking and so on, but leave that aside. You know, there's something called reform fatigue. Reform fatigue. Yeah, countries mm -hmm. have been reforming. Rwanda has gone from 99 to 45 to 11 to 2, what, what, what. Now, look at the rate of new investments coming into the country yes. versus Kenya. Clearly, Kenya is ahead of all of East Africa in terms of attracting new investment into the region. So, the doing, either of doing business tells only half the story. Correct. Mm -hmm. The real story, uh, as has been mentioned here, is what you find on the ground and the rate of new businesses coming into Kenya is much higher than any of the countries in the region. So the businessmen who open businesses in Kenya are yes. the ones who really vote with their money. And yeah, the World Bank can give you all the data you need. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, this is a paper exercise. You are number what, I'm number this, you are number that. But the bottom line is who is attracting the most foreign direct investment and it's by far Kenya. Mm -hmm. So I think we need to uh, celebrate that and uh, across the region, 
African countries are doing well right. relative to the rest of the world. Okay. But again, this reform fatigue where they are reforming, but in equal measures, the investments are not coming. So we need to ask, does this thing really give us a, a, a true picture of what's happening? On All the right. Board? But the latest uh, indicators from the Na uh, Nairobi Securities Exchange is that, of course, a lot of uh, foreign direct investments, you know, uh, we have capital flight right now. Right, yeah. Because of such headlines that we have on the front page of Star, this was uh, on, on Tuesday, right? Debt fears over new 250 billion shillings euro bond. And uh, Treasury peers Kamau Tuge, uh, Tuge confirms to borrow despite experts' warning. And of course, after this particular pronouncement, we've seen that particular, uh, 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 I think the shilling also, uh, it, it has remained resilient so far. Bit, yeah. But there has been reactions as far yeah. as uh, foreign investors are concerned as well. If you're really talking about the ease of doing business and uh, we're saddled with this you know, uh, cloud that is hanging over us, how, how, easy, how, how easy is it for us also to be doing business under such cloud where we are, we, we, we are saddled with so much debt as well? Patrick. I think the, if you look at the, the debt that has been rising, I think let's look at total debt, right? There is external debt and there is domestic debt. They're almost exactly the same. And the government is literally looking everywhere to finance development infrastructure. Now, I think the conversation around debt needs to be looked at alongside the conversation around returns. And when you look at the big borrowing that the government is doing, the returns are actually measured in a much, much longer term than the traditional debt that me and you and a lot of corporations look at. So when, the, when you look at the quantum, it's huge. The repayment of that debt in terms of the growth of the economy and, and social development and so forth may take another 15 years before you actually realize that fully mm. um, on that. So I, I, those big figures, I think, tend to get people a bit, um, uh, a bit agitated at the end of the day. But I believe that if you do all that, but at the same time ensure that you're able to get your return, you'll be fine. And I just take the case of the SGR as Prof was talking about here, mm -hmm. and, the, and the ICD in Makasi. Yes. We've had a great investment on, 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 you know, on, on a facility mm -hmm. to bring stuff in here. And then we fail at the very simple fundamental things of getting those boxes out of that ICD Absolutely. within a day, mm -hmm. right? Which was the objective. At the end of the day was basically the, the box comes from Mombasa to Nairobi and is out immediately. So you're not crowding that particular area. So I think the, the basis of getting that debt is fine. It's just what to do with it. And all of that is internal to us in Kenya. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I would rather not talk, I would rather sort of say, fine, we have to borrow, we have to sort of invest for the future. But it is how we make that investment work that you should be looking at a lot more. Right? Where Kenya borrows, it borrows from China, it borrows from all over the place, that's fine. Um, Gabriel here is one of the people we borrow from. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. They don't just give us money just because they think they want to give us money. All the lending agencies, especially the sort of the long-term lending agencies, have a set of parameters which they look at before they release that money. And they hold you accountable to basically meet those parameters over time. So it's not just cheap money coming through. We are actually, as you say, you've got uh, rights and responsibilities. Exactly the same thing. We as a country have to deliver. And that option of delivery is where the problem is. The ICD for me is a perfect example. The, the SGR and the ICD is a perfect yeah. example of yeah. where yeah. we do the right thing, but we don't extract the value of the investment that we made. Mm -hmm. yep. So whether it's, you know, we, we, we've got a five trillion, um, uh, five billion, uh, no, five, yeah, five, five trillion <laughs> Kenya shillings um, um, de budget. debt in sitting debt, at the yeah. moment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. both, both international and public, yeah, is, is about, about that level, All right. right? Our annual budget is how much? Three trillion. Three trillion, yes. Right? The GDP is at one level. So in, in <coughs> terms of that, it looks scary. <laughs> But even I have to borrow to, you know, to build my house. Right? Right. And if you look at the amount of money I borrowed versus how, you know, whatever I'm earning and so forth, it looks crazy. Mm -hmm. But so long as your repayments, your loan repayments and everything else, you can generate that money to repay that loan. Mm -hmm. That's the key thing. And what we were talking about earlier on about the efficiency of tax collection, what have you, and everything else, the corruption, if all that can be stemmed, the amount of money that we've borrowed as a country isn't exactly crippling for a, for, 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 for a nation. Mm -hmm. 
But I think we need to do things internally in Kenya to achieve the kind of growth that that investment can make. Mm -hmm. But in, in light of what is happening, because you've mentioned also the return of investment, and SGR is one of them that, yes, we are yet to benefit from the return of investment. Mm -hmm. But what happens when, you know, that particular timeline that we've been given to maybe service our loans is having hiccups by, uh, by what also is headlined on the front page of a business daily? Let me just pick it up because uh, he, also Uganda is thinking otherwise as, as far as the SGR is concerned. Uh, we can just read there. It says yes, Uganda okay. abandons SGR plan in favor of old line. And of course, we are banking on Uganda to also be on this particular, you know, a seamless flowing, uh, you know, SGR, uh, uh, yes, uh, the railway line itself, for us now to get the return of investment. What, what then really happens, uh, Collins Odote? Or maybe Patrick, you can weigh in, because I know you're just about to leave. Ke Kenya, it's Uganda that needs Kenya to, uh, to, to perform for them to put the SGR. Kenya in itself, if the SGR reaches Kisumu, right, we are done. Mm. Right? And we do everything I've said earlier on. We actually begin to look at processes of unlocking that investment. Kenya will be fine. Uganda is the one that is saying, we are not going to borrow because ours relies on the fact that the one from Kenya is efficient up to the border. Right? So they are going to wait until that happens. Use the lake. <laughs> to be able yeah. to transport with the lake, you can carry more goods, bring them to Kisumu. Woo. So Kenya is fine mm -hmm. in terms of that investment. It doesn't need Uganda. All right. Odote. There is an interesting story in the business daily today uh, following the tabling of a report on our debt management around two weeks ago. Mm. And what? in response to that, the MP for Allegro Songa, someone at hand is proposing to amend the public finance management bill in terms of controlling the our debt, our borrowing appetite and how to use the money for. I think two things arise out of the conversation. The first is debt is an important part of growth. You can't be able to develop as a country unless you borrow, especially if you have an ambitious target as we do as Kenya <laughs> in infrastructure, in several other development aspects in universal healthcare, but we need to borrow. So for me, that's not the problem. I think <coughs> the issue is just around two things. The issue is about, A, once we borrow the money, do we have the fiscal discipline <coughs> to put it to the use that is required? Mm -hmm. uh, is the money all being put into the uh, intended purposes? So that if we borrow to build the SGR, mm -hmm. is all the money going to SGR or is some of it leaking? I think that's the first critical issue. The second mm -hmm. critical issue, uh, and uh, Patrick mentioned it in passing, do you generate enough uh, resources to be able to repay? And I think that's where the challenge has been. If you look at the debate around our finance bill 2018, the question was we were spending too much money, in too much in terms of debt repayment. Yes. And I think that's part of the reason why even the president said, let's not start new projects until we've completed the ongoing ones. But I think what we must now ask ourselves is as we look into a new Eurobond, are we going to a place where mm -hmm. our debt levels may be unsustainable? Are we going to a state where the amount of tax we are raising mm -hmm. will largely be going into repaying debts and into only meeting our current expenditure, mm -hmm. leaving us with the debt room? I think that's, that for me is the critical conversation. The conversation is not that we should get debt. The conversation is whether we are putting that amount into the right purpose and whether we are allowing ourselves sufficient physical space for us to be able to repay that debt. And that's right. why I have a small problem. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, before Patrick, also, you, you go. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I really do appreciate you coming through. I know you have thank a you. board meeting this morning. You have to leave early, so yeah. uh, we thank you for coming through as well. But uh, let's, let's also tell you this uh, idea that uh, Mgwen uh, MP Alex Kosge has, that uh, is, he's seeking to, uh, actually has a bill, which is, uh, I think, uh, with, the, with the speaker right now, seeking to cap, you know, borrowing. Uh, he wants actually to you know, amend the Public Finance Act so that he, he might seek to curb uh, borrowing. And then that also will, the, the CS will have to get approval from Parliament before effecting any future borrowing. And also we, he needs all the bills seeks to also address the issue of intended purposes for this particular borrowing. Could you tell us more about uh, uh, this particular move? Will, is it a salutary move right now? Because when we borrow, we are not told about the intended purposes of this particular borrowing uh, that uh, you know the government seeks to to effect. I think I think they do because at the end of the day, we elect them to protect the Mwananchi. Mm -hmm. All these things will pay back. It's through the taxation. So yes. I think I think it's it's their responsibility. 
and uh, the gentleman from Economic Institute of Economic Affairs has been very clear. Yes. And, and I really second him. I think that is important. And I think I want to bring the point uh, which uh, Abath was raising. And I'll give, th I'll give three examples. If you look at the SGR, the cost more went to compensation. Lad compensation. Because Gabriel and I colluded and said, buy a piece of land, we'll compensate you higher. And that's, most of it went there, if you actually break down the SGR. Mm -hmm. That's why it's cheaper. The SGR from, uh, from Addis to Djibouti is cheaper. Second, Ramu, which I was involved, the port has taken so long because of compensation. You go today, you have 500. Next time, there's 2,000. They want this kind of amount to compensate. The last one, it was here this week, yes. was an irrigation dam, I mm -hmm. think for irrigation, I think in Busia. Mm -hmm. And they said, we don't need it until we are compensated. And I was like, who is benefiting from the dam? The same thing, Kirinyaga, they are not asking for a penny. Mm -hmm. Because they see the dam. And I think the, the National Assembly has a responsibility to ensure that we, there, is a borrowing, there is a cap on the borrowing. Yes. In the sense that, is this borrowing we are doing for intended purposes? Mm -hmm. Really, I cannot borrow from the African Development Bank yes. for compensation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's good to appreciate that. I think nobody is saying that these people should be not compensated. But there are four alternatives. The first alternative what is good is giving a better land than mm -hmm. what they have. That's an asset you provide them. You compensate them with, with cash, and most of them want cash. Yes. It's a matter of time they are back into squatters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you can actually see what already happened with the SGR people. So I think the National Assembly has to come, cap it, for what purpose? I think that's their responsibility. They cannot. It's a constitutional right. Mm. Yes. Responsibility. Mm. So they should. And it should have happened by yesterday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So we, we sort of address all this. And, 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 and you're right. When, when we address, and the quick question a business student who asked, and I was shocked that uh, Kuria, I think this guy Kuria, the MP for Gatundu, understand the return on investment. He says mm -hmm. he's a business student. Every business you get, there must be return on investment. Let's borrow. And I think about what he has just left. I can tell you, one of, each one of us here, perhaps you're staying where you're staying because you borrowed. That's where you're staying. Because we borrowed somewhere. And somehow we paid back the bank of where we had borrowed. And I think as a country, we can't grow if we don't borrow. But let's borrow and use this for intended purposes. Mm -hmm. The National Assembly should come in and say, Yes, this was for Asia. There are nothing to compensation. You guys in Kitui, I'll take you maybe in a better piece of land. Mm -hmm. A combination. Buy shares in this SGR, get a part of cash. Mm. So there's a way. It's a whole study, and uh, perhaps in, uh, I've seen it a lot of in uh, uh, African Development War. Uh, compensation of people who are affected by the project. And there's a certain ways you can deal with it. Thank you. Uh, 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 Gabriel Negatu, what do you think about that particular move? Do, you th do we need to cap it? And of course, also, he says uh, we need to get the emphasized repayment plan as well. So will this bill sell? Yeah. Look, we've had a recent experience with capping uh, credit to the economy. Yes. And uh, we, know, we know the success of that experience. Uh, I'm not sure moving towards capping is... is, is is the best way, particularly for, a le for the legislature. Yes. You see, in Kenya, my view is we spend too much time worrying about the volume of the debt and not enough time on growing the revenue side. You know, debt is a, is, is, is a function of the, the total revenue. You know, if we spend as much time as growing the economy as we do about worrying about the, the debt, then the debt issue would be a multi issue. But instead, everyone is focusing on the volume of debt. Now, debt, just for your listeners, Dabal, uh, is a function of three things. When you measure debt, you measure debt to GDP as a ratio. So as a total, as a, as a percentage of the total goods and products produced in that given country, that's one measure. The second is debt as a ratio of revenue. You know, as a percentage of the revenue I'm taking in, how much is my debt? And the third is, debt as a ratio to export, export earning. Now, when you look at these three together, the Kenyan debt is not alarming at all, at all. And I think the president was right when he said he's not worried about the side of the Kenyan debt, as well as the mix. Kenya is not dependent on one particular country or institution. It has a very diverse 
mix of uh, debt from different countries, different currencies. You know, when you borrow in dollar, are you exposed to dollar versus euro versus yen? So mm -hmm. I think all of that is, is there for the public to see. Mm -hmm. But this move to amend the public finance, on what basis does the parliament understand the, the demand for debt? You know, yes, the treasury has to go, and as the elected representatives, they have to go and explain to them what is being borrowed, the intended purpose, and so on. But to sit and put a cap, you know, an arbitrary cap, mm -hmm. uh, would be a disservice to the economy because a growing economy needs debt, as, as everyone agreed. We all borrow, we all borrow, in one form or another. The question is, what do we do with the borrowed money? Now, Kenyans are frustrated because they're not feeling the impact of this debt. And this is, remember in the past, I've talked about squeezing the asset. Mm -hmm. We've built the asset, we've built the SGR, we've built uh, the Mombasa port and so on. This is no time to squeeze that asset and have it start producing returns. Mm -hmm. And this inland terminal, I think is a very good example where we invested billions into the railway only to have it come and stranded at some terminal in Mbakasi. Mm -hmm. So once we clear up those kind of bottlenecks and begin to squeeze the asset and begin to produce the returns, I think Kenyans will realize and perhaps appreciate that what was borrowed did indeed go to build the kind of infrastructure that enables us to make a step change to go to the next level. Right. But also the World Bank was holding the view of, uh, you know, uh, Gabriel Negatu as far as the resilience of um, our economy is uh, with, with, with the debt. But now they've really changed tone. And they're saying now we, sh we are raising red flags and we're concerned about the external debt. Uh, uh, Odote, tell us more about this because now they've classified, uh, I think, Kenya's external debt uh, from, I don't know, the low to the moderate. Uh, yeah. you, to yellow flag, not red flag. From green to yellow to yeah. red. It's a traffic light system. <laughs> oh, okay. So you have yeah, green, yeah, yellow, yeah, and red. So we were in the low, which meant green. Yeah. Now we are moderate, which means yellow. Okay. Whereas many of the but countries I, I around I, I, us okay. are red. <laughs> I didn't mean it literally. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so now yeah, I understand it, also it, it literally a, yeah. you have flags as yeah, well. Yeah, it's okay. a traffic light system. So we are on the yellow on flag. On the yellow, yeah. Mo moderate. Moderate. Moderate debt. You know, versus, if you look at my own country, Ethiopia, where it's, it's in the red. It's been in the red for some time. Uh, again, it's a big economy, a lot of movement. Therefore, invariably, you're going to have a larger debt. But Kenya has now gone from green to yellow. Yes, the flag is there to say, be careful. Correct. Keep your that's eyes that's on the debt. Yes. Make sure you borrow prudently. Make sure you use it prudently. Make sure you program for its repayment. You know, uh, because this repayment, some of them are in bullets, some of them are in tranches. So liquidity management, cash flow management, these are the kind of things you need to start planning for now in anticipation of when your debt is due. But it's not to say don't borrow. No, it cannot be. It, it's the same you're saying in the street light. When you're driving, yeah. you notice when it's coming to green, it doesn't tell you anything. Yeah. But when you're moving from green to red, it warns you. Please stop. To yellow. Y yes, yeah. it goes to your yeah. abba, yeah. as they call it, yellow. Mm. Yeah. But when it's from red to green, it doesn't tell you anything. You just go. Yeah. And I think the point being made here is we now start raising the frogs. We need to start looking at differently in terms of where we perhaps the next stage we might get into. Uh, and I think the point that we were making earlier on, I, I think perhaps let's not, uh, we can borrow, but I think what we're talking about here is effective utilization. So there's return. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Investment. I Thank think that's what we're saying. Yeah. Thank you. And Debal, yeah. that's yes. why for me, despite uh, what Gabriel says, that uh, on what basis is Parliament uh, <coughs> to, uh, getting into the issue of debt? I think that is the issue of ensuring that we don't reach red and that there's prudent management mm -hmm. justifies the involvement of parliament. It's a constitutional responsibility. In fact, I think one can argue they've actually shucked that responsibility since the 2010 constitution. Mm -hmm. They're waking up to the fact that we, they can't just sit there and only pass the budget and wait for the next of the things to happen and wait for Toshi to do the rest of the things. They have a responsibility to provide oversight. That oversight requires that they know how much money we are borrowing, they know what use we're putting it into, and they are able to monitor that we're putting into that exact use. I think there might be a debate about uh, whether an artificial cap 
that would, let's not bore about this amount of money is a thing to cover because that might be making Correct. the argument yeah. that the bigger problem we have is that nobody knew how much we are borrowing. I don't think that's the bigger problem. The bigger problem we have is that we are not sure that the amount of money that we borrowed were all used for the right purposes. Mm -hmm. That's, I think, the first thing. The mm -hmm. second thing is that we are not sure that as we were borrowing, we all collectively asked and answered the question that are we, is the levels sustainable? It is not enough for that answer to be with CS Rotich. It is not enough for that answer to be with PS Tuge. It is enough for that answer to be something that is shared collectively by the Kenyan people. Because at the end of the day, we are all responsible for paying that amount of money. And when we reach the red, it is not treasury that will be in the red. Yes. It is the country that will be in the red. So mm -hmm. we need to ensure that our management is a management that is sustainable. That is the mm -hmm. idea behind mm -hmm. the new mm -hmm. constitution. Mm -hmm. But to be fair, yes. to be fair, uh, as a Kenyan today, you can go into the website. Mm -hmm. As we sit here now, you can go into the treasury website and find out exactly what debt Kenya owes to who. Now, that information is out there. Right. It's not with Rotich and Tuge. It's out there in the public domain. Now, every citizen, not only the parliament, every citizen has an obligation to at least look at it and understand it. But I agree with you that the parliament has an oversized role to call in these officers and say, what are you doing with, with this? There is a role for the Auditor General mm -hmm. to look at the, the end of year and say, where has this money gone? So that oversight responsibility is intact, should remain, should even be enforced. But setting an artificial cap, that I think is worrisome because it becomes arbitrary. Mm -hmm. But if it's done in consultation with that region, then I think it, it will I be... I think you're raising a very important... But, but there has to be some, some measures, truly, that yeah. uh, we, we, we don't have... As in, yeah, if we look at all the metrics, are we able to be saddled with this responsibility of actually servicing this particular debt? So if we are borrow, uh, borrowing, of course, this is the, even in the banks, they'll tell you, of course, you, uh, we are looking at your pay slip. You cannot be able to service this particular amount of loan. There has to be a capping as, as some sort. And so that happens cannot, we, during we cannot, the budget cannot, process. Say, yeah? During the budget process, mm -hmm. where you go to the parliament and say, this is my budget for next year. Mm -hmm. I intend to do one, two, three, four. Some of this I'll finance with this. Some of this I'll borrow. That is the time when you start questioning. Exactly. The National Assembly says, but your mm. pay slips can't. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and the ball. You have said it, you have said it so well to yeah. Memo 90. Yes. yes. Your pay slip can't. Can't. Yes. That's yeah. at that point. That's the time. For me, actually, that is the, that's, for me, that's the, I thought, the real intention of the bill. Correct. The real yes. intention of the bill is not even so much the cap. The real okay. intention okay. of the bill is to, give, to ensure that the National Assembly is much more playing its oversight role, yeah. not yeah. its auditing role, oversight role, meaning that as part of the borrowing, they can be able to do exactly what Gabriel is saying, that to say, hey, wait a minute, mm -hmm. in this instance, we think that our pay slip mm -hmm. cannot enable yeah. us yes. to do this. Let's first focus on doing this so that we can clear our pay slip so that tomorrow we can borrow that. That's, I think, what the bill is intending. And in that instance, I think the bill is doing the right thing. Uh, there's, there's, in, in terms of saying, lo, don't wait until you have borrowed. Yes. Then come and say, oh, now we can't sustain it. We can you sustain help it, us? Yes. We can be able to ask ourselves at the start, by the way, can we, do we really need this debt? Absolutely. Is there a different alternative? And I think that's a legitimate but conversation. But you need to inform your listeners about that. Mm -hmm. What this means is you need to start curbing your appetite also. Mm. Kenya yeah. needs to start mm. curbing mm. its appetite. Mm. And, and exactly, right. that, is, that is what mm. the World Bank mm. is mm. warning. Mm. Yeah, mm. Cap, cap, uh, yeah, cap, yeah, The expenditure trend. side has to mm. be curbed. Mm. And it's the same legislature. Yes. The same legislature that is leading the expenditure on the budget. Excessive travel, <coughs> what, what, But what, he's what? making a very important yeah. point. Mm. It's not the World That's Bank to tell us. No. Mm. Because mm. Kenyans will not understand mm. that. Mm. But if these members mm. of the National Assembly tells the Kenyans what it means, it will sink in. That's the story we yeah. start giving out there. Mm -hmm. And I think they are, I love the example. Is your pace like I've evaded my space slip today to the bank? They tell you, Wainaina, you can't get this loan. But Gitu, mm -hmm. there's actually a more fundamental issue. Yes. It's not about the m members of the National Assembly telling Kenyans. Yes. I think the first thing, the members of the National Assembly should tell themselves yeah, them before themselves. they tell Kenyans. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 they, uh, they must first realize appetite, that, by the way, mm -hmm. if we use these amounts of money, yeah. it will come from somewhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, the most interesting thing is if you looked at the, the figures that I saw in the media, it was saying the amount of money we were having for development was almost like two shillings or something. Then, the same person who is presenting that information tomorrow says, but you know, government is not releasing money for us to construct building X. 
Mm. But you just saw the figures yesterday. Mm -hmm. The country is what doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. So if you want this released, you must realize it will come from somewhere. Unless you bake a bigger cake, yes. you can't uh, live beyond your means. Thank you. Thank Let's you. worry about growing the economy. Growing, Let's worry about growing the economy. Growth. Growth. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, some of the reactions that we have here on, on social media before we move on. Uh, tax and tax. Uh, 4.5 billion shillings allocated to entertainment. Maize of uh, 10 billion shillings in silos is, is spoiled. 15 trillion shillings hidden overseas. Kenya's currency is printed in Kenya. Primary school's exam is printed overseas. NY Saga, 10 billion shillings looted. Evolutionary theory is asking. <laughs> also, we have uh, Samuel Oruto saying, once you find a country must get into debt to do even the simplest we are required to do with the resources we have, regardless what type of debt, Eurobond, local banks, or Chinese, what it implies, you are debt dependent, and you can't do without loans. Also, we have, uh, this is <coughs> Osmanali saying, no, you need so much permits and licenses to set up even a small kiosk, which is more than the small capital you want to invest, and there is double taxation on everything with the economy growing very slow, things are tough, uh, they should tax more the rich. Of course, this is in light of uh, ease of doing business. Mm. Kennedy, Kennedy Omogi saying compensation for SGR while we had the chance to use the old track land policy made with what do I get? And uh, maybe last one from also Kennedy Omogi saying so many SMEs have collapsed. Isn't that not contradicting the report? And of course, we just had that particular uh, conference uh, with the uh, the SMEs with the president at Stratmore Business School. So if there's an ease of doing business, why do we have, in the last five good years, uh, so many SMEs also folding, around two million of them folding? That's another question.